It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Could you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Would you be my neighbor? <laughs> what a job. I never knew what you could sing, too. I didn't either. Ah. So, I have two people to introduce you to. We live here in Welcome to Mr. Robertson's Neighborhood. And in Mr. Robertson's Neighborhood, there are no safety blankets and no safe spaces. So, nobody can be fired either. In other words, this is a mythical land that doesn't exist in America today. But I would like to introduce you to two of my friends. This is Mike. Now, Mike is rather rigid, and he's righteous, and he <laughs> loves law and order, and everything that's good in America, he symbolizes. In other words, he's a conservative. Can you all say conservative, boys and girls? Conservative. Now, this on the other hand, this is Ned. What? <laughs> No, 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 his name is Nancy. And what I'd like to talk about is something that we haven't discussed for about a year. So most of us have already forgotten about it. And this is what happened to five Dallas officers back in July 8th, 2016. And I'd like to read to you some of what was in the newspaper at that time. The heavily armed sniper who gunned down police officers in downtown Dallas, leaving five of them dead, specifically set out to kill as many white officers as he could, officials said Friday. He was a military veteran who had served in Afghanistan, and he kept an arsenal in his home that included bomb-making materials. Officials said they found no evidence that the gunman, Micah Johnson, had direct ties to any protest or political group, either peaceful or violent. But his Facebook page showed that he supported the New Black Panther Party, a group that has advocated violence against whites and Jews in particular. Searching the killer's home on Friday, detectives found bomb-making materials, ballistic vests, rifles, ammunition, and a personal journal of combat tactics, the Dallas Police Department said in a statement. During the standoff, Mr. Johnson, who was black, told police negotiators that he was upset about Black Lives Matter, Chief Brown said. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings of black people. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect said he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. Just hours after President Obama reacted to video recordings of the shooting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Minnesota, he spoke in anguished terms about the disparate treatment of the races by the criminal justice system. He didn't condemn the killings. He talked about how maybe some of it was deserved, at least in his initial discussion. But William Johnson, executive director of the National Association of Police Organizations, appeared on Fox News and said there was a war on cops and that Obama administration was to blame for the appeasement of those who attacked the police. Fuck the pigs and everybody fuck with them! Fuck the pigs and everybody fuck with them! That's right. Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! All power! All power! All power! All power! All power. Oi, oi! Oi, oi! Oi, oi! Bang, bang! Oi, oi! Bang, bang! Oi, oi! Bang, bang! Now, I would like to read to you something from a group called the KKK, a hate group. Here's what on their web page. It goes beyond the narrow nationalism that can be prevalent within white communities, which merely call on white people to love whites, live white, and buy white. That sounds pretty racist, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm, I'm upset about that. And yet, guess what? This didn't actually come from the KKK website. This came from the Black Lives Matter website. I just interposed the black and the white. It actually says on Black Lives Matter, it goes beyond the narrow nationalism that can be prevalent within black communities, which merely call on black people to love black, live black, and buy black. So, are you still upset? No comment. 
Well, that was very funny. Maybe you should be a Toastmaster, Eric. I'll try. Hmm. What else is actually on this website? Let me read to you what Black Lives Matter also has on their website. They talk about how black poverty and genocide is state violence. And you can see this on blacklivesmatter.com about. They talk about how 2.8 million black people are locked in cages in this country as state violence. Those are people who are in jail for committing crimes. They talk about how black women bearing the burden of a relentless assault on our children and our families is state violence. They talk about how black queer and trans folk bear a unique burden from a hetero patriarchal society that disposes of us like garbage and simultaneously fetishes us and profits off of us and that is state violence. This is from the website of Black Lives Matter. They talk about how 500,000 black people in the US are undocumented immigrants and relegated to the shadows. They talk about how black girls are used as negotiating chips during times of conflict and war. Now that's actually happening in Somalia, that's true. And they talk about how black folks living with disabilities and different abilities bear the burden of state-sponsored Darwinian experience, experiments that attempt to squeeze us into boxes of normality defined by white supremacy, and that is state violence. Well, that seems to be defining it in pretty broad terms. But in fact, we need to see that there are problems in black America, and we need to try and figure out what we can do to solve them. But a lot of those decisions are up to black people, just like white people, just like Hispanic people, and the individual decisions that they make. You can't fix every problem unless the government takes over everybody's life. Here's another institution of, or incidence of violence. Not too long ago, on June 14th, 2017, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise was shot by a GOP killer. Cops are killed the shooter in a chaotic gun battle. A GOP loathing gunman turned a ball field into a bloody battlefield, critically wounding the House Majority Whip in a Virginia shooting spree that targeted two dozen Republicans. Authorities say Hodgkinson acted alone and offered no guesses as to his motive, but the hardcore left-winger was a constant vociferous critic of both the Republican Party and President Trump. Representative Ron DeSantis offered a possible clue to the shooter's intentions as he left the practice just prior to the shooting a man approached and asked whether Republicans or Democrats were on the field. The gunman was also a volunteer for Senator Bernie Sanders campaign for the White House last year. Five dead police officers, a bunch of dead Republicans, and we've had a lot of violence. A lot of violence from Antifa, a lot of violence from those who advocate impeaching our president. We've had 12,000 tweets about assassinating Donald Trump. We've had Hollywood stars claiming they want to blow up the White House. Madonna was one. We've had a lot of calls for violence. And most of those up to this point have been instigated by Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and Bernie Sanders supporters. Then we get to Charlottesville. Now I'd like to read to you what Antifa said on their website which is itsgoingdown.org, and it says, Why We Fought in Charlottesville, a letter on the dangers ahead. And this is actually written by a Nazi and published on their website. You can see a rather horrible looking picture of them all lined up ready to beat people. I am one of the thousands of people who confronted Nazis and white supremacists in Charlottesville, Virginia last weekend. Donald Trump says that there was violence on both sides. Of course there was. Permit me to quote a post from a clergyman in Charlottesville at length because it correctly explains what happened on Saturday morning and why. This is from a clergyman who was there. A note on the Antifa. They are the reason Richard Spencer did not speak today. They are the reason the Unite the Right march didn't happen. They strategically used violent tactics to incite the Nazis to violence, such that the governor declared a state of emergency before noon, before the Unite the Right rally was scheduled to begin. The Antifa strategically incited enough violence before noon to make the police declare it illegal to gather in Emancipation Park. Through this strategic violence, they effectively made a previously legally permitted Nazi rally illegal. And then he goes on to say, Donald Trump was elected head of state through the democratic process, of course, as was Adolf Hitler. He has the support of millions of people, so did Adolf Hitler. His government is in bed with people who dream about carrying out a second holocaust and reinstating slavery, among other things, 
we have every right to topple the government if we can. And this is signed by an anarchist who didn't want to give his name, but he belongs to an organization called Crime Think, and he defines Crime Think as everything that evades control, the daydream in the classroom, the renegade breaking ranks, the spray printed walls that continue to speak even under martial law, is the persistent sense that things could be otherwise, that there's nothing natural or inevitable about the prevailing social order. This is an anarchist's own words about what he's trying to accomplish. And what he's trying to accomplish is preventing free speech. Now, I don't agree with KKK. I think they're horrible people. I think I made a joke last week about all those Democrats should be uh, you know, put away somewhere. Because that was who founded the party of the KKK came from the Democrats in reaction to the Republican Lincoln winning the Civil War for the North. But free speech is a lot like forgiveness. I didn't like to forgive people when I was younger, and I kept reading the Bible, kept telling me to forgive people, and finally I figured out forgiveness is not for the other person, it's for me. If I forgive someone, I'm no longer running through life hating that person every time I think of them or look at them, I'm no longer destroying my life. I'm no longer drinking from a poison and hoping the other person dies of it. So my life gets better when I forgive others. Their life is better because I'm not going around spitting at them or hating them or barely you know, hiding my disgust. But my life gets better. It's no different with free speech. You don't give other people free speech necessarily for them. You give it for yourself because if they have something important to say, you might learn something. If they have something stupid to say, they will discredit themselves and lose their political power. You give people free speech because most of the time you can learn something that benefits you, but sometimes you give them enough rope to really do the job themselves and marginalizing themselves. That's why we have free speech, guys. You let some KKK guy get up there and talk about how he, he's filled with hatred, no one's going to vote for him. They're all going to dislike him. Look at the reaction to the statues. The Confederate statues are all coming down because of that one incident of violence from somebody who ran over one of the Antifa protesters. One incident compared to all the incidences on the other side. Now I have a map here, and I'll go ahead and pass this around. This is a map, there's actually a website called the Anti-Trump Hate Map. And this is a map of all of the violence against Trump supporters throughout the United States <coughs> up until about a week ago. And there's hundreds of them. And you can go to every single one of these and press on it, and it'll get you to a website. And I did this a couple of times, and I found that there were people in bar fights and people who were wearing pro-Trump hats, and they were getting their throats slashed in bar fights. Some of them were dying. So we have hundreds of people with vandalism getting their throats slashed, all of this other stuff, has the mainstream media mentioned any of that? To the extent that they've mentioned the one person who was run over at the KKK rally? I mean, if there's a hundred dead Trump supporters, why haven't we heard a hundred times as much information about them? Donald Trump came out on the day of the attack and said some of the following words. We're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. It's been going on for a long time in this country. Not Donald Trump, not Barack Obama. This has been going on for a long, long time. It has no place in America. What is vital now is a swift restoration of law and order and the protection of innocent lives. We have come together as Americans with love for our nation and true affection, really, and I say this so strongly, true affection for each other. That's why I started this with singing about our neighborhood. He's almost sounding like Mr. Robinson here. Above all, we must remember this truth. No matter our color, creed, religion, or political party, we are all Americans first. We love our country. We love our God. We love our flag. We're proud of our country. We're proud of who we are. So we want to get the situation straightened out in Charlottesville, and we want to study it. And we want to see what we're doing wrong as a country where things like this can happen. My administration is restoring the sacred bonds of loyalty 
between this nation and its citizens, but our citizens must also restore the bonds of trust and loyalty between each other. We must love each other, respect each other, and cherish our history and our future together. So important. We have to respect each other. Ideally, we have to love each other. What's wrong with that? Seems pretty good to me. Fellow Toastmasters.